close together as possible. That's okay. Yeah. That's gonna kill us in the earthquake. We know it. <laughs> <laughs> We've already accepted that. Yes, we already know. That's good. That's all that matters. Are you guys earthquake proofed? Uh, you know now we are. It's okay. Embarked. The museum putty for What's a lot. Oh, right. oh, the like scoop yeah. that you keep yeah, because as, as you oh, would imagine, I have a lot of anime figures. Sure, and you're a dweeb. So <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna live in front. <laughs> you know. By the way. Fancy bathroom. This is the first time. Oh, beautiful, using, right? Yeah, Amazing. Yeah. So much. Aesop soap the, and oh, hand Aesop balm. soap. You know, we try the wallpaper and wallpaper with the beautiful yeah. frames. Yeah. Thank Which you. Which not enough people have the 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 hand balm or lotion available. You gotta have both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah you gotta nice. moisturize. I'm not trying to have my friends be all crackly skinned. You yeah, know you're I mean? gonna Oof. be at the Food and Wine Fest. That's what it told me. <laughs> <laughs> it told me. Oh, Mike is gonna be at the Food and Wine Fest. Checking in. Uh, hey everybody, welcome to Top Chef Fantasy League, the podcast where the whole concept of the show is right there in the title. I'm your host and commissioner, Mike Cablon. With me are my co-hosts, Sierra Kato and Ify Wadiwe. Welcome. Hello. Hello. We got a lot to get through tonight. Yes. And in a short amount of time, so let's just do it. Some updates from last week. You, okay, Sierra, you oh. did some, um detective work on david oh, murphy's disappearance right give us the update look i take i can't take too much credit i think i was on reddit and then probably somebody pointed to oh well he said this like david himself said something about he has signed an nda and he wasn't allowed to compete so i was like oh that's interesting because when we looked up uh tom colicchio uh his ex or twitter he said oh he um opted out so um, I went Drama. on David Murphy's uh, account, sure enough, um, which you had looked at before, noticing he hadn't posted in a while. And yeah. I looked in the comments, sure enough, somebody hey, said, hey, where were you in Last Chance Kitchen? And then he said, oh, I, I all I can say is they didn't let me compete. I signed an NDA and that's all or something wow. along those lines. Little he said, he said. Truly yeah. conflicting stories. That's why I actually, know. you know, I took some screenshots. I'm sure we'll... Uh, you know, put those up somewhere, but, uh, you mm -hmm. know, you, you guys, I, I sent them over just to show like, listen, these two do not align. Yeah. It is it, it, the opt out versus this NDA mm -hmm. story mm -hmm. makes me lean towards, you know, the potential of something happened, something bad happened oh, gosh, because you yeah. keep mentioning an NDA. I don't want to skip ahead to last chance kitchen too much, but sure. When the person who is eliminated walks in the last chance kitchen, you can see on their face, they're like, you can tell the editors had to cut out a whole 10 minute conversation where he goes like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who is David? <laughs> Who's this guy? What's happening? Yes. Right. Yes. Everyone is shocked by it, which is now solidifying proof. I just took it as one of the crazy new things that they're doing this yeah. season. And yeah, the, it was funny because, you know, when I told him, I was like, oh, maybe it was and she's like, yeah. And then. We speculated here, and as soon as I w went back to him, she was like, oh, yeah, that's what I thought. So I was like, oh, so are you just <laughs> holding back from me? You're just letting she me... has real opinions yeah, that yeah. she will oh, not share with you. Yeah, yeah, only she'll only share them with you <laughs> and Sierra. I'm boxed out of this combo. Wow. Thanks for listening, Em. It's good. We've, rad we've radicalized everybody. Uh, yes. We have more chefs following us. Kenny actually went so far as to comment a little heart on one of our reels. So thanks yes. for listening, Kenny. We love you so much. Um, today's episode, and keeping in tr with the tradition that last week you brought uh, Miller High Life, the week before that you brought Saratoga. Um, this week I brought Uplands Dairy Pleasant Ridge Reserve, uh, which was labeled in the show as the most awarded cheese in American history. Uh, I didn't think I would actually be able to find it, but I found yeah. it. I thought you were joking when you said it was that. No, that's genuinely found? Uplands Dairy Pleasant Ridge Reserve, the most awarded cheese in American history. Goodness gracious, we're... We're killing it. Please like, feel like free to try we, some. Asira and I had a little bit okay. a second ago. Yeah, yeah. We can get some live reactions on air. Oh, yeah. And we can cut out the parts where you chew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, we don't want to put For all the... that extra work oh, on yeah, you. Oh, yeah. it's a nice hard cheese. It's, yeah. It's, it's nice, firm. Right? Okay. Yeah, it's firm, not hard. Sorry. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's a good cheese. I mean, <laughs> a great reaction. Like if you were to have me eat this and go, do you think this is the most awarded cheese? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't, you know, you yeah, know, sure. what we were saying is it feels sort of like up the middle. It's not, um, it's not extremely creamy or extremely sharp or extremely mm -hmm. nutty. It's just sort of like it kind of plays in everyone's sandbox. Right. I yeah. feel like if everybody, you know, maybe it's like the Oscars ballot where you can kind of put your top, <laughs> your second, your third. And like yeah. maybe that's what, you know, it's kind of like 
in at least everybody's top three, maybe. In that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pleaser? the one that um, pisses off the least amount of people. Yes, mm. the people pleaser. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. There we have it. You can find it at your local grocery store, probably. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's dive right into the episode. Our episode opens. We're still in the stew room after the last episode. I think this is like a, a function of streaming editing where like people are just going to go right from the last episode oh, of this yeah. one. Charlie and Amanda both in tears, which is heart wrenching. Yeah. And, and Kevin says that Top Chef America is harder than Top Chef France. Which, which I, I was, love that. Yeah. I love wow. that for both America. I love that for... <laughs> For the uh, French, you get yeah, to take it easy. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, the French who like you know, kind of, kind of doing too much when when it comes to, they, they look down on Americans oftentimes, and I think especially when it comes to food, they probably do. But French cooking looking, does like kind of that's where everybody that's looks the, to yeah, right the mother yeah. cuisine. So, but apparently not top chef. Yeah, right? maybe those no. uh, three month vacations. Uh, <laughs> Slowing y'all down in the kitchen, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. All that those maybe, social maybe safety the, nets. The crippling late stage capitalism of America <laughs> produces better television. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought? Uh, after that, we get the cute little humanitarian moment where Roscoe and Danny go for a run together, which I think is like a trend because last week's episode we didn't even talk about it, but it started with Manny and Michelle going for like a little walk. And I like this trend of like, we're going to open every episode with just like two of our chefs having a little moment outside. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. Builds character. Yeah. After that, we see Dan putting on his leg braces, which to me is an omen of the spill to come, which we'll talk about. Oh, we have to. We will. Uh, And then we get introduced to our guest judges for the quick fire, Carla Hall and Clea Duvall. Delightful pairing. I love Carla Hall. And uh, as, as like a chef and host. Oh, yeah. I I listened to her um, podcast that she had to kind of a short lived podcast over the pandemic that oh. I was really into. And she's just a delight. The best. Uh, yeah. A ray of sunshine. And then we also get a little uh, lore from Rosica uh, mm-hmm. revealing that Rosica is queer. So, yes. And uh, much like most of the queer women I know, but I'm a cheerleader. Big that's movie. that's oh, the one. Yeah, yeah. Big for movie. women of a certain Clea age, coming that's in with the that. One. Yep, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yes. So big shout out. I really liked that. I really liked uh, getting. You know, also anytime that can be shown on a national stage, which is how much. But I'm a cheerleader mm-hmm. has helped queer women. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I was real hyped for that moment. Great, great. <laughs> It was the faculty for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our quick fire challenge is door county cherries paired with a mystery ingredient that you pick from behind a door because Top Chef is nothing if not on the nose. Our prize is $5,000 with no sponsor. Ooh. Crazy. It's like they, they saw a reel. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they said, we're going to show you. <laughs> we got to dial it back. They pulled it. They immediately pulled yeah. it. That was supposed to be the Hobby Lobby. <laughs> <laughs> the Hobby Lobby quick fire challenge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, no sponsor, so no drinking game. Sorry, put your cups away. Uh, we don't have to go through what everyone drew. These are just the ones that were interesting to me. Michelle drew ginseng, and they say that it was the state herb of Wisconsin. Oh, I know That's... so much about this. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, us. okay, a couple things. If you go to Chinese market out here or Asian market where they sell ginseng, let's uh-huh. say, they've got the main boxes, and they're all like cardboard boxes yep. or whatever with big American flags on them that are like uh-huh. grown in America. Oh. And then it's always in Wisconsin, typically American Ooh. ginseng. And, you know, it's, a, it's sold by the box. So, yeah, I always see it at the front when I'm checking out. And then... When I went to Wisconsin, um, if you are, I, I guess, uh, East Asian lady going through Wisconsin <laughs> um, in that, that part of town, you know, they they tell you right away, oh, we do ginseng here. No this is a big way. part of our thing. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So, you know. That's the kind of stuff, As a, we can all relate to this uh, being people of color, but that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, I don't know how um, threatened I should feel. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When they're like, oh, you're Asian. You know, we have ginseng. No, and I'm no, like, we do the ginseng, ginseng thing here. That is generous, mm-hmm. but I've got my guard up a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like the gumption that you had sure. to give me that information. Yeah. Yes, I know. One thing I did want to point out about this challenge is how the way it, it went, Rosca got to pick who First. they wanted. Yeah, so yeah. we... We kind of had this picking system, and I don't know if y'all overanalyzed it the same way I did. <laughs> okay, here we go. Because I was like, okay, I'm very interested to see like who fucks with who, who uh-huh. likes who. And it very simply went pretty much like Rosica 
when picked a running partner. Yeah, yeah. And then it was just like all the brown people picked each other, which I was like, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with that. Well, and then they, they point out that Manny went last because everyone sees him as a threat, which yeah. I think is really interesting. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think he probably... I, I you know, it's funny because this... He, you know, I watch a lot of the challenge and those mm. kind of reality shows. And Top Chef as a competition reality show is very positive. It's never giving the right. juice and the drama. Yeah. I am always curious because I know that they see each other as peers, as chefs. And even I did something with chefs. Now they're very like chill. Like they're not. There's like a brotherhood to being a chef. Yes. Yeah. But I was like, there has to be one person that people are like, well, he's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do feel to, like. Profile, you should, my oh. pick would be Manny. <laughs> wow. He's wow. French. I do. I feel like I went to no, Europe. No, Kevin's recently. the French one. Oh, never mind. I take everything back. I'm sorry, <laughs> Manny. Sorry, Manny. You're good. You sh- did not deserve to get back. <laughs> I do feel like the show... <laughs> In earlier seasons, used to be a lot more like yeah. we're put, we're also putting them in a house to live together, yeah. and let's see what drama erupts. And like it, I think it naturally worked its way out because chefs by nature are like I don't want to fight with my competitors. Yeah. Right, right. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. And they'll and probably like, collaborate later. You know, yeah, it's exactly. like they don't want to make enemies. But yeah. also, um, I think chefs naturally are competitive in a fun way mm-hmm. that you don't need to force it. Where you know because. We're, based on the, the commercials that we're seeing, Bravo is the caddy reality show <laughs> network. Absolutely. So I can see where it started there, and they eventually were like, oh, no, they'll have the competitive nature. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's not where the, the hook of this show lies. It's yes. not in the drama. It's in the competition. Right. Though I do want to put, point out during that conversation, um, I think Savannah, like they had a uh, uh, interview with her where she talked about the fact that she's like well nobody wants to get picked last and i'm like i'm pretty sure we, we picked her last in yeah. our little thing. Oh, i was sorry, like how did she Savannah. know Savannah. but sorry, you know Savannah. again we've addressed it she's proven us wrong yeah she's she's hanging on yes uh so our least favorite dishes in the quick fire were charlie again at the bottom charlie hurting me but he go ahead this was a tough episode <laughs> and we'll <clears throat> we'll get into it more in the elimination yeah. challenge mm. yeah but I, I was on the edge of my seat yeah. the whole episode. You're talking to this, a guy who had two people in the bottom this time for the first time. I was yes, also sweating this which episode. I did not expect. I was sitting there with him. I'm like, this is, I, I don't want to get ahead and we'll talk about the yep. bottom. But yes, it was. T- so I'm glad that I wasn't the only one in the hot seat. But it was, it felt like a rough challenge. So the quick fire, though, it was rough for me because you had, yes, we said Charlie. Mm hmm. And then my then my man Kenny Kenny Kenny, Kenny once it, again Kenny once Kenny again Kenny with the marshmallows I know yeah which is which is hard if oh, you yes. have any cherries and marshmallows I also would not know what to make so yes. sweet yeah yeah and that's what I was thinking it was like you it is like a too sweet on sweet so you mm-hmm. almost have to subvert it but I think my southern brain keeps thinking of like candy yams sure oh, that, that, that makes sense with the dessert that yeah. kind of like tops it Ooh. and I do mm-hmm. think he overthought it because he kept talking about how much he didn't know what to do with it yeah he went with his first thought which yeah. was like you see marshmallows you think s'mores and he just yes. ran with that I think in terms of overcomplicating it Charlie to me because he drew chocolate and it's like chocolate and cherries feels like a layup yeah. you know what I mean it's oh, like I, I cheered yeah, put it together in any form. People are gonna like it. But he was yeah. still like, it's too easy. Like the, he, it was a little, little too a little, a little yeah. flew too close to the sun. He's like, it's too easy. I'm gonna do something out of the box and did beats and fell on his face. Top oh. ten ways I think people fumble in Top Chef specifically is just not taking. I think because, but this is an interesting line of walking. You could tell me as like the hyper veterans. I feel like <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, wow, yes, I've yes, never of been course, called that. I salute you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, I feel like the the biggest mistake is either not doing enough and doing too much. Yes. And I feel like when you have a layup, you're afraid of you're, you're in yeah. that middle zone. Right. Yeah. But I think you, you definitely lean too much. I think spicy, something spicy chocolate sure. would have been Ooh, an easy yeah. thing. Sure. But yeah, this was, I was looking at it. I was like, what are we why, doing, Charlie? Why the beats, Charlie? Why the beats? Real mind game. Uh, third least favorite dish was Alicia, who drew serrano peppers, made a cabbage dish, but her cabbage was just undercooked. She just had these huge hunks, threw them on the grill. <laughs> it did, yeah, that seemed like a tough one. I think also she was like, she did speak about the fact, she's like, well, if I cut them too small, maybe they fall through the grill. So right. yeah, she yeah, was yeah. thinking. She but... was thinking through it. And that's okay. People mm-hmm. make mistakes. Yes. Our favorite dishes, on the other hand, Savannah, who drew chicken liver, 
and uh, made a chicken liver mousse with panzanella salad. She said it's not in her wheelhouse, but to me, this was again one where to me I was like, this feels like a slam dunk. To me, yes. mm -hmm. chicken liver mousse is almost always served. Sweet I thought of two dishes cherries. immediately here in LA. I don't know if either of you have been. Either of you have been to Agnes in Pasadena. I don't think so. It's so they do a cornbread eclair that ha it's like oh. filled with chicken liver mousse Whoa. and they dot it with cherries on top. It is oh. one of my favorite chicken liver mousse dishes in wow. the city. And then uh, Girl and the Goat, Stephanie Ooh. Izard's Ooh. restaurant, she does the crumpets with chicken liver mousse and there's always like a little cherry relish there. And I'm like, oh. these flavors go together very naturally. Yes. And not to harp too much on Savannah because she she landed in the yeah, top. Yeah. She did a really good job. Yeah. But at first she was like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, girl. Yeah. It's right there. Seems like yeah, yeah there's stuff. Uh, yeah, the, uh, another I'd say a hidden layup with, yes. with her dish. I know it's very funny for me because I cannot do uh, chick, uh, chicken liver a lot because Ooh, it's a little too um, irony. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. But um, there has been a few places I've been that has knocked it out of park, and Girl and the Goat is mm. one of them. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. crumpets really help. Stephanie yeah. Izard's little fried crumpet things are just like yeah. The Breaks best, yeah, the best. Uh, other favorite dish, Kevin, who made a, a cherry and black garlic steak kind of thing. Uh, a, a poile, as he calls it. And <laughs> Kristen says, what is a poile? And he <laughs> says it's sort of like sautéing. And uh, Kristen's like, oh, I had no idea. Yeah. We're all learning. Bringing in that vocab. Love mm -hmm. it. Uh, and finally, Roska, who got to draw first. Although, here's the thing with like picking your ingredients. They're hidden behind a door, so uh, yeah, it didn't really seem like a huge yeah, advantage. I felt the exact Not same an advantage. way. It yeah. felt like... Less of an advantage, yeah. Because I feel like I wouldn't want to go first because you couldn't see. Right. Yeah. It felt like a way to right. fill the extra fifteen minutes they now have. Yeah. 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 Just <laughs> random. Uh, anyway, Roscoe drew the Cipollini onions. She lands in the top three, and she ends up winning the quick fire. After winning last week's elimination challenge, Roscoe really coming through. Yeah. As a top contender, how are you feeling as your team captain? Oh my god. I mean the. the my household was right and high. We were very excited. It was like, it was like, she's, you know, I, and I, I knew she was good, but she's just really been delivering obviously with last week, this week. So it was great. And her dish looked beautiful. So it I was looks very great. excited for as much as like, uh, I'm not a fan of the kind of dish that is just sort of like, here's onions on a plate, but I promise it tastes good. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yes. It did seem like a good version of that variety yes, of yes, dish. Definitely. Yeah. So we move on to our elimination challenge, which is a cheese challenge. The challenge is to serve 100 diners at, as they keep saying, the, quote, first ever Top, che top Chef Cheese Festival. Mm. And I bring this up because they said it so much that I was like, are they going to keep doing this every year? Yeah. They kept saying it's the first ever Top Chef Cheese Festival. And I'm they like, does that mean... When we go to, I don't right. know, Spain next year, we're going to do another one? Yeah. Is it annual? Yeah, that seems true. I guess if there's a first, you hope there's going to be more. But, I mean, it's Wisconsin. There had to it's be a Wisconsin. cheese festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I will say something I um, thought while listening to our podcast while drive, dropping my daughter off. Uh, you know, trying to get the fans early. Hopefully, she would go be our street team. <laughs> tell oh, her, yeah, tell yeah. Her, Spread the word. Tell, tell, tell her, her peers. Second, yeah, yeah, tell their second yeah. graders Good. to have their parents uh tune in like there's a chance you know we get enough buzz we'll be at some of these top <gasps> top chef events i that was gonna be my next point because <laughs> so many times when laura and i've been watching the show we're like how do we get to a restaurant wars yes. or how do we get to one of the like the festival okay so i will say i what You've was been. it i you got i invited. didn't know i didn't get to go the sex lives of college oh, girls cast I was wish. invited yes. oh my god no i wish <laughs> um yeah i mean the only reason why we do any of this right um but i think truly like okay i had bought tickets i don't think it would have been the filmed one but it was a top chef related like festival Whoa. thing and i bought tickets and then COVID hit oh. so it was literally like it was like one that was like in la i think it was that like universal or something no. you know what i mean so i know they exist and then i think my um my fiance's friend who lives in london and of course last season was in london right, right? Yeah. that he was like oh yeah i think i went to one and we we're like <sighs> what you're not even a fan you know i think it was like it was like so you know flip it like oh yeah i think that's yeah. what i went to and so we were like looking for him in it but i'm not sure if he went to one that was filmed or you know something extra wow. but they're definitely i mean you know it, it has to be just those sort of like casting call things where it's yeah. like hey we know 100 people here like and, and I'm sure maybe it's just friends too. So who knows? If you're at all related to a producer on yes. Top Chef and you're like, oh yeah, I can get three invites for that. Bring Ooh. us to one of those. Yeah. Oh, we want to go to season 22 restaurant wars. Look, I feel like we're in the zeitgeist in a very interesting way. <laughs> I can't wait to have an off pod convo about uh -huh, something uh -huh. I did. 
where I think we're we're in the we're in the we're in the space. Oh, oh. I think we can have some fun. Okay, okay. watch the space. Also, we need to figure out what we're gonna do between seasons. Uh yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> other people have brought that up too. Don't worry, we'll figure, we'll figure it out. out. Yeah. We'll be fine. We'll, we'll watch cross the, that bridge the, when we get to the it. The guys March Madness games or something. <laughs> Uh, okay, so 100 Diners at the first ever Top Chef Cheese Festival. The crowd votes on the winner, and the judges are only deciding who's on the bottom this time. As What do y'all feel about this? Because I remember I, I kind of love it. Yeah, it changes everything up. Because, because I think... I think that one of the main criticisms of the call it fine, fine dining in general is mm. that it's like it's for a specific audience. But when you say you're just cooking for a hundred pe- a hundred Wisconsinites, yes, and I, I, that sounds derogatory. <laughs> My tone of voice is like I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> what I mean is like just a hundred people who have nothing to do with like fine dining, <laughs> and they're going to be the judge. I think it sort of levels a playing field. And even spoiler alert, Michelle, who won, said her whole strategy was like I'm cooking for the people. Yeah. If they're the judges, then I'm going to cook something that people people actually like not like fancy frou-frou whatever yes very smart tactic and I think yeah I think it's the thing where I mean I guess you know we'll address this later but I was a little skeptical at first because of course you're like I mean who knows you know and also specifically Wisconsinites might have a different perspective on cheese because they're so accustomed to it than like maybe your average American but um but because I think that it kind of aligned with what seemed to be what the judges were also kind of leaning towards plus a little maybe extra input like I, then I was like, okay, this was a good choice. But yeah, going yeah. in. Yeah, I'm a fan of that choice. I hope they do more of it in the future. Uh, everyone immediately decides they're doing croquettes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Can we, this, what? Because <laughs> we watched people realize there were multiple croquettes and no one and no pivoted. One, yeah, no one budged. Yeah. Not right. a single person. They said, no, we're going to do it. Yeah. And I think at least if I was in that position, um, even though this was one of the, I think, better cro- cro- croquettes, uh, you had a French dude saying that mm-hmm. they were doing it, and you had someone from the South saying they were going to do it. I would have back been, off. Yeah, I would have. You been can't like, touch those yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, I was like, those are already the croquette campus. Yeah. I'm a step back, mm. but honestly, came out on top. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh gosh, what was like? Oh, okay. So here's a point of debate. The rules say you can, you can get a point if your chef says, this is Top Chef, not blank. Yes. Here is what Roska said. She called it Top Chef Croquette Fest, but she did not say, this is Top Chef, not Top Chef Croquette Fest. Ooh. So my inclination is to rule it as zero points. I, I agree sure, with that. Sure. I think, yeah, I think we are looking for a very like a cliche phrase, which has happened not, a lot in Top Chef history, yes, and not a right. kind because, of play. Yeah, because she's here saying like this is what's happening right now, but I guess right. we're looking for the kind of snarky like yeah. guys. This isn't what you're supposed to right, be doing. Exactly. Okay, okay. I would have so, yeah, loved okay. if she would have said this Top Chef we not Top so Chef, but close but no cigar. Zero points there. That's okay. So we start cooking. There's a lot of, to me, I noticed a lot of cultural musical chairs. Savannah yes. got Oaxacan cheese, so she does a quesadilla, and Manny's like, I would have loved to have done that. <laughs> Michelle is like, I'm going to do a sag paneer, even though I don't have the right kind of cheese. She buys all the collard greens in Wisconsin, which I thought was very charming. <laughs> yes. Wasn't, it didn't look like there were that many there. Yeah. I, I was like, oh, yeah, it's pretty small. You're right. It you is, know? It's like, it's just like a fair amount of collards <laughs> yeah. in that. But I was, look, I loved it. I was like, hell Yeah. <laughs> Because I love me some collard greens, too. Who delicious. Yeah. And Michelle apparently uh, incorporated them into a sag paneer beautifully. Oh, it looked so good. And, like, there there are a lot of foods that look good when we watch Top Chef. But there are standouts where you're like, oh, I wish I I want that. that." Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And we said it was the the um, hot honey cornbread. Oh, yeah. And now this, I think. It's always Michelle's food. Yeah, Yeah, queen of that, really. Yeah, really. I, I and I do want to have a a moment to shout out Michelle because I do think, you know, early in the draft, we talked about our worry about, you know, being a grill mm-hmm, person, mm-hmm. being doing the grilling for all this time, and Michelle has really stepped outside of her comfort zone yeah, and has truly. been rewarded for it every time. Mm-hmm, it is mm-hmm. Genuinely exciting to see because I think she's going to be a sleeper this season. Because right now it's Rosca Fest. I think everyone's putting their like. If we t- look at the Vegas odds on Rosica right now, <laughs> it's looking good. But I do think the way Michelle has been performing and standing out and doing creative things, 
that you don't expect from her, I think might be a sleeper. I'll say this about the the odds. I, I did a little bit of the math Ooh. here. Michelle is the only chef who has been consistently in the top for every challenge so far. We wow. are now on episode three, and every cha- every uh, quick fire and every elimination challenge, she has been part of the top. Like favorite dishes yeah. or, or judges table or whatever. I think, yeah, I yeah, I, I I was surprised you said Rosca, even though of course I think yeah, her momentum is is really gaining and she did she's done really great stuff lately. But yeah, Michelle's consistent and I think what was really cool first episode she said like oh I don't really you know I'm kind of I don't yes. know you know but the confidence is building that's key yes. mm-hmm. and it's working for her and you know I like her story of she didn't start till 32 yes. and that's very mm-hmm. inspiring people but then on top of that it's like well clearly fast learner so maybe yeah. her acceleration is going to be a lot more because yeah, she, she has, has like more quality. life experience going in right right I would also like to say that Michelle has perfect teeth oh yeah <laughs> so but she was so smiley and happy at Great the time. end and every time she smiled I'm like damn those that's those are good teeth yeah <laughs> Good ass team. <laughs> Shout out to her Twerking. orthodontist. <laughs> Rosica draws Dunbarton blue, and she decides to make a paniaram, which is a sort of Indian rice cake. And she says it usually takes two days for the entire fermentation process. She's going to do it in two hours. That is 0.25 points. Oh, yeah, did yes. a fist bump when I was watching. Yeah. Uh, and the judges say it's fantastic later on. Kalina, my team, uses store-bought pasta. That loses me 0.25. Wow. And it pains me to say that. Here's yeah. the weird thing, though. No one cared. Yeah. Kalina made mac and cheese, got into the top, <laughs> and no one gave a shit that she used store-bought pasta. Every other season of Top Chef, someone used store-bought pasta, it's like the death knell. And they were like, yeah, whatever. It was still well, good. One, I think there, there's two pronged reasons. With like a mac and cheese, store-bought pasta is where you want to go. I sure. Think, I, like I truly think I, I talk about, um, do you know Andrew T.? Uh, mm-hmm. Not personally. I know. Yeah, 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 but yeah. Andrew Tate, I remember he told me this story of him and his friends getting together and they wanted to try and make the best like rodeo burger. Like, you know that, okay, uh, yeah. that Western like bakery. Barbecue Ooh. sauce. And barbecue yeah. sauce. Onion rings. Onion rings. Yeah. And so they got the best, you know, the, the best ingredients. They they made their own barbecue sauce, the best cheese. The, the It was like prime meat. And they said they finished, they bit into it and they're like, Oh, it just tastes like a like any other. Yeah, burger. Oh, like, sure. yeah. The the taste that you have when it's che- uh, cheeseburger with onion rings and barbecue sauce is this taste. Mm-hmm. Like you cannot mm-hmm. elevate it more. And I feel like mac and cheese has that element too, where it's like you can make sure you the, can throw the lobster pasta. in there, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and you can make the pasta from scratch, but yeah. you're, it's still gonna taste like mac yeah, and yeah. cheese. Yeah. So I think that's why she might have been rewarded. And I think the second reason is because they tasted her mac and cheese after. 50 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. More yeah, unique. Thank God it's not fried. <laughs> yeah, yes, that is the exact one. <laughs> Good thing. Yeah, I know. I will say too, one um, fact I learned about, uh, you know, store bought pasta is that you can't really, you can really do, if you want to do al dente, you really kind of have to go that way because you can't do it from mm-hmm. fresh pasta, apparently. Yeah. So, um, and shout out to Dylan for telling me this. So, yeah, so that could also be like some, like a lot of chefs don't necessarily like look down on it. They're like, oh, well, you're trying to do that, then you got to do that. Right. And like, yeah, I guess right. the best way would be you make it and then you dry it or whatever yourself. Sure. But yeah. obviously nobody has time for that. Yeah. So, so you know, maybe they it's not as like taboo in that if you get a good Ooh, store-bought well, pasta. Yeah. And that was part of Kalina's reasoning is she goes like, this is not the time for me to show off my pasta skills. It's like, yeah. I got to make this tomorrow for a hundred people. So, yeah, and I think that people, like you said, like, they just sort of like, sure, in yeah, this challenge, that's if that's fine. what you're trying to do, then yeah, go for it. And let's talk about that in this challenge where it's like, you got a hundred people to feed as part of the challenge. And it's a hundred degrees. It's a yeah. hundred degrees. And there's bees flying around oh, everywhere. Boy. Bees flying everywhere. It really, uh, again, commercial watch. <laughs> I, I got a couple of commercials for literally like move to Wisconsin. Yeah. It was like the rent is cheaper here. That was the commercial I got. Yeah. And uh, and then we cut back to like it's hot and there's bees. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Sorry, Wisconsin. No, thank you. Yeah, yeah. The commercials were <laughs> worked against you. Canceled out. Yeah, exactly. Okay, here's where I want to talk about the spill incident. Oh, and I'm going to cover this in a biased way. Okay. If I were a journalist, I would be fired for this. But here's what happened in my eyes. Charlie starts off by dropping cream on the floor. <laughs> and he goes, hey, everyone, watch out. Dirty floor. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah got it. We're going to keep cooking. Laura slips on that spot, spills even more, tries to clean it up, rushes back to her station. And then Dan, and look, no one wants to see Dan slip. No yeah. one wants to see anyone slip. No one wants to see Dan slip. Dan slips. And then he gets mad, and everyone kind of blames Laura. And I'm like, hold on. 
Charlie did the first spill. I, Why are we all mad at Laura? Because I think that. that Charlie kind of made a big announcement of it. And I think that gave everyone the chance to assess it and think, okay. That, I'm not going to walk around yeah, that yeah. area. Yeah, yeah. That area, it's, it's not, it wasn't big enough. Now, maybe I missed it, but when Laura spilled... I didn't hear any notification. I, th- I think <laughs> she, just, sp- she just said it was like slippery, but I would say like, yeah, what do you do? Cause I know they're all rushing around. They don't have time. Sure. So yeah. they're, they're a, they probably don't remember if somebody announced it and then B, they're not going to get down and clean it up. Yeah. 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 So they're I'm used like, to running a kitchen it, where a sous chef bends over. And, right. Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, is it like a production problem? I'm like, listen, you guys, you have people here, you know, get a PA like, over slipping there and falling. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, is that, you know, it's, it's a set too at the end of the day, mm-hmm. not yeah. safe. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm kind of like, maybe we blame the old top chef producers. Ooh, Ooh. That's on them. Ooh. Someone call OSHA. <laughs> Well, that's on Ayatsi. <laughs> uh, we stand in solidarity with our striking yes, Ayatsi yeah, brothers yeah, and sisters. They, they, uh, so it's the night before the actual cheese festival. Kalina calls her boyfriend. We get a nice little package about how she moved her boyfriend and his mom from yeah. Seattle to Chicago, but they treat her like that she's their own because her own parents died. It's, it's very adorable. Um, I bring this up because I double checked again. According to topchefstats.com, shouts again, we, we've talked about them in a past episode. Calling home means that that person gets to the judges' table 84% of the time. Ooh. And it doesn't necessarily mean good or bad. It doesn't mean top or bottom. It just means they're going to judges' table if yeah. they're calling someone home. 80. Wow. Hi. Yeah. Uh, and she ends up being on top. So uh, that was fun. The festival happens. It's hot. There's bees. What else? <laughs> okay, the judges eat a bunch of croquettes. Yeah. Um, that was all I wrote. I was like, I don't want to cover this part. They just eat a shit ton of croquettes. Yeah. Some so, are good, some are bad. So do we want to start on the <laughs> on the goods or the bads? Let's let's start on the goods. Let's Okay. Uh, I can talk about the top 3, but if you have call outs. Well, I I will say as we transition into the good, yeah. that th- this was the point where I turned to M where I was like, I need Michelle to pull this out. Because mm-hmm. I think the bottom is going to be all three of my guys. They mm-hmm. all got bad, <laughs> bad notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlie got no love. Oh. It was under seasoned. You had, um, you know, I actually, I, I don't know what was said about Amanda's. I think uh, Amanda made a raclette orange with Mornay inside and more Mornay sauce outside. Some olive and fig. They loved it. They, um, yeah. Dale, the guest judge, said it, it gave Cuban sandwich vibes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People love that little olive hit. So Amanda seemed to have done really well. Yeah, but they, but but they, I think I was focusing on Charlie's under seasoning, and boy oh boy, did Kenny fumble and Tom. Probably the most mad I've seen him all season where he was like, <laughs> and, he, and he was pouring the wet stuff on it. And Watching it was still- <laughs> Tom get increasingly angry this episode brought me so much joy because when he does his first kitchen walkthrough and he's like, hey, what you making? They're like a croquette. And he goes, oh, okay, cool. And then he goes to the second stage, what you making? Every time they said croquette, you could see him just like, <laughs> just die a little bit more inside. And he's like, I fucking hate this show so much. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It, it, was, was, not- it was tough. Yeah. Yeah, but I genuinely, like, going through my head, I was like, so what happens if all my guys get knocked out? Am I just chilling with y'all as y'all play the game? You, you really hope they come through on sure, Last Chance Kitchen. Yeah. yeah, I mean, which we'll also get to that, we'll too. We'll get to that. But you bet. I, no, I mean, yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> So up at the top, we got Kalina again. She pulled the Bella Vitano cheese. She made a, a mac and cheese out of the judges say, it's a celebration of the wash on the cheese, which I yeah. looked up mm-hmm. is a Merlot wash. And so she made the Merlot mushrooms. Oh. So like, it's a great use mm-hmm. of it. Amazing. Dan, who made uh, a, who got Sancho Cruz Manchego, and he made uh, potato dumplings with an olive tapenade. Everyone said it felt light and summery, good textures. They loved it. And Michelle, who pulled the um, the Uplands Dairy Pleasant Ridge Reserve, the most awarded cheese yes. in American history, uh, and she made a coconut curry collard green sag paneer with a little potato fritter, and ev- everyone loved it. Kristen yeah. said it was, quote, fucking fantastic. She oh, loved M it. Made, rewind it and she said, watch Kristen's face yeah. while she's eating this. And she was like, she was like, no. And then it gets to the line, which is like, fan fucking test. She was like, yeah, yeah. we could tell the way. Yeah. She's wow. It's what you said last week where it's like the way it, when the judges just hit a certain tone of, mm, it's yeah. like, you can yeah, tell. Yeah. That's, the <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> uh, okay. So Michelle wins it. And I once again, regret not drafting her on my team <laughs> down at the bottom. Yeah. As the judges point out, voted on by the crowd 
and the judges. The judges were like, here's our bottom three. And also, for the record, the crowd agreed with us, which yeah. feels wow. like an extra, Oof. like, hey, just so you know, you yeah. fucked up by all accounts yeah, here. Yeah, uh, two of my guys on the bottom. We got Manny and Kevin and one of your guys, Kenny. Let's And, and you know, I'm glad you brought up the thing I said when you, when you can tell the judges are going to pick mm-hmm. the winner because this was definitely the flip of that when you can tell who lost. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they flambéed Kenny. Kenny. From the beginning. Yeah, Kenny was getting destroyed. You can tell in the way that they criticized Kenny. Yeah, yeah. And then the moment they criticized the other two, I was like, oh, Kenny's it's, done. Yeah, because yeah. the other two was like very fixable. It was like, and I got a shout out to, um, was it Kevin who uh, was like, hey. I didn't. Manny. Achieve. Manny, yes. Uh, I yeah. always mix up Manny and Kevin. I have no clue why. Uh, no, but, but Manny owned it. He was yeah, like, I know what I did wrong. And I wouldn't do it again. They cream their jeans. Yeah. The, and that is like the number one thing <laughs> sure, I owning. think you can do as a chef is own your mistake and let them see what you were trying to do. Right. And they'll forgive you other than the like excuse train, which for some reason people still do. Yeah. Yeah. They just get in their defenses. You know, I understand. But yeah. And then wait, sorry, who had the curds that were on top? Was that? That um, was Manny. That was Manny. Okay. Yeah. So so I kind of also see like why he had to own that because it's yeah. like, you know, I was, I, I've had a good fried cheese curd in Wisconsin and you just, you got to do something with that. Yeah. yeah. And that was their criticism of Manny was yeah. he didn't manipulate the cheese curds at all. Cor- it was, yeah, yeah. As, as Carla said, just straight out of the bag, just like Weird. dumped them on top of the I know. I dish. found that so strange. Yeah. I mean, he was trying to do like a poutine thing or something. A riff on right? poutine, I get. And he also, his, his one sort of defense was like, it was too hot. And Tom says to him that like, um, he was like, it sounds like you were trying to do something impossible. And then he goes like, half the game is up here. It's mental, man. Like, don't try and do something impossible. Sure. Yes. And to yeah. Kenny's credit, when Kenny was like, I'm making a salad, he brought up the fact in his little talking, he's like, well, tomorrow's going to be really hot. So I'm not going to make a fried thing. I'm going to make a salad. Yeah. So Kenny did think ahead in a really oh, yeah. smart way. Mm-hmm. And still messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And still messed it up. You know, and, and you know, I, like... Well, like we always say on the show, there's no bad chefs, but there are chefs that are losing me points. And <laughs> oh, we get no. to the point where Kenny and I and I got and it was a tough go. I I truly like my heart was wrenching for how they were just going after because everyone else it, it felt like actionable criticisms that they can take, and they felt it felt like they were done with Kenny. In that. well, okay, in in the judge's defense from the walkthrough. Like Carla Hall and Tom Colicchio walk through the kitchen. They're like, hey, Kenny, what are you doing? He's like, I got Gorgonzola, so I'm going to do a crab rangoon salad. And just the, their immediate reaction was like, really? It's <laughs> This isn't a show like MasterChef where there's coaching, where they're like, yeah. hey, I wouldn't do that. It's just like you got to let them do the thing they're going to do. Yeah. But they were like, that's a bad idea, and it, it's probably not going to be good. And then they were right, A, because the concept wasn't good, and B, the execution wasn't good. Yeah. He he ran out of his oh. little cherry relish, yes. you know, and he's like, "Well, maybe I'll save some for the judges." And they said it felt like he was just spooning wet stuff on top. But then also, <laughs> if you just if you told me cold in any restaurant, it's like here's a gorgonzola crab dish, I'd be like, "I'm gonna pass. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go get one of the other things." Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. And so he had to pack up the knives. <laughs> he had to pack up those <laughs> yeah. knives. Uh, we uh, we should also not skip talking about Kevin. Who, yes, yes, sorry. For a French guy, got triple cream brie, and everyone's like, he's gonna knock it out yeah. of the park. Yeah. But his, his croquette was too melty. Yep. He had to double bread it. Mm-hmm. Everyone said the ratio of breading was way off. It was gross. And also, I'm going to take some umbrage here with my own pick. He was like, well, you know, we're in a cornfield. I want to do something American. And Tom's like, that doesn't mean deep fried. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. Hey, <laughs> man. Hey. Hey. We what don't do you... just eat deep fried bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I was telling you about these French folks. I was telling you <laughs> all through this episode, they look down on us. Now look at you. Yeah. <laughs> So Kenny goes home. He packs up his knives, and uh, and he is listening. So we love you, Kenny. Yeah, yeah, we love <laughs> you. We're Kenny. really rooting hey. for you. Um, Kenny is a guy that I'm like. Don't let me when I pull up to your restaurant. I'm gonna try and smoke a little blunt with you in the back. You know, <laughs> he does record, seem smoke bluntable. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Just especially when we get to Last Chance Kitchen, I was like, oh, he took down all the he, he took down all the professional speak. He's like, nah, I'm Kenny. Now. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, ooh, yeah, this, yeah. this this the Kenny I wanted. To I'm see. my grandma's yeah. boy. My grandma got me yeah, his necklace. I'm yeah. cooking for grandma. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah he called yeah, his grandma Kenny. hard ass. He's like, I'm a hard ass like my grandma. I'm yeah, like, this is great. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of Last Chance Kitchen, this is what I was talking about. Kenny walks in. You can see on his face. He's like, what? who's this guy? Where's David? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Jaw on the floor. Yeah. 
I, understandable. Yeah, yeah. He's, he sees first he sees Valentine. He's like, oh man, and then he's like, who the heck is this yeah. guy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the challenge in Last Chance Kitchen is to do a a Limburger cheese dish. And Tom goes to great lengths to explain how gross Limburger is. Oh man, I was yeah. the so same bacteria that causes body odor. Oh. Yeah, and they only have 20 minutes to make Limburger cheese into something palatable. Right, right. Kenny, I think, sums up very nicely what the whole format of Last Chance Kitchen is when he says, "Remember that yeah. thing you did bad? Here's the worst version of it. Now do it better." <laughs> oh yeah, it, it was like, "Wow, that's the best way I think I've yeah. had it described and what the energy of Last Chance Kitchen is." And I was like, "Yeah," and I, Kenny. Really, I really feel bad for Kenny because I think if he was up against Valentine or David, he would win it. Yeah. This is where I say, Suan's a fucking sniper. He came out swinging, he's a, man. He, he's a fucking... I, this is the part where I think, where I wonder if Dave was always going to go up against Suan because this... Suan, based on his dishes yeah. and his like composure Absolutely. and his skill Absolutely. and what he's been doing, it's like, oh no, I feel like they cast you specifically for this. They yeah, knew yeah. you were gonna be good at this. Yeah, he's the ringer. Yeah, because he like the, like it like I know I was giving him shit last week and was was talking we all about. Were. He's a new guy. Sure. He's a new guy, but it. also I was like, you're you're just doing the fancy stuff. But it's like, oh no, you are hearing it and you're like, mm-hmm. I know what I do best. I'm taking what you're you throwing at me and yeah. I'm gonna do it the way I do it best. And I genuinely think it was a close match up between him and Kenny, but it was just such a well executed dish from Suan, but that that Kenny yeah. got knocked out. Like, it really yeah. was. And I was glad that Kenny was like, I don't even feel bad. I'm like, yeah, dude, because you did crush it. But you are up against a mercenary. Yeah. And I and we got <laughs> we, we got to keep doing research. We got to know what the original plan was. Because ain't no way mm. he was, like, a backup. I think he was. You think so? I think David was supposed to walk in there with him. And David heard about him and was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he turned right again. around, packed <laughs> up his knife. Oh no, my I'm God. Good. I, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I will say he, Sue seems like, you know, made for last chance. Yes, kitchen, yeah. You know, yeah. the improvisation is all yeah. there. The technique is there. Like, I do think if he was on the original cast, we would have probably picked him pretty early because yeah, it seems absolutely. like he really knows what he's doing. Yeah. I, but like, tr- like this is my tinfoil <laughs> hat theory where, you know, we talk about specialties and especially like the different, um, um, challenge types mm-hmm. within Top Chef and the ups and downs. And this is someone who feels like they were built in a lab for Last Chance Kitchen. Like, he's never worried about the timing. He's never, like... Well, it's, he was worried. He just didn't... He didn't let he anyone didn't, see him sweat. But in his yeah. talking head, he's like, 20 minutes is not a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, 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 but, yeah. like, every time it's so ready. Where yeah, it's yeah. Like, you know, like, I'm like... He roasted whole tomatoes. That was the thing where it's like, right off the bat, he mm-hmm. started roasting tomatoes no and then made a Pomodoro. And I'm like, that's already impressive for 20 minutes. And then he was like, it's a Ponzu Pomodoro. And I'm like, fucking <laughs> A, dude. Yes, yeah. I mean, you know, okay, so now I'm kind of coming over to this conspiracy. Maybe, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm getting yeah. radicalized. You know, Kristen Kish, she, you know, famously was, mm-hmm. as they played in the first episode, came, you know, got knocked out, came back, rose mm-hmm. from the ashes, won, mm-hmm. beating out uh, Brooke, who that I know she was pretty pissed about that. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, so maybe there's sort of, like, a story they're trying to craft a little bit. But yeah. who knows? Or, like, or they, you know, they try it. It may not work out. They're like, well, look, we at least got him a little far along. And maybe there's something here. But it's yeah. possible just because this is his first Kristen season. And yeah. that's her origin story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I could see the producers trying to push a narrative. But I also feel like Tom and Gail would not let producerial yeah, intent right. override like good food. Do you well, know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. And this is why my my brain has turned into this theory <laughs> because I think you're so right. You know, I remember at first I was like, maybe he's there and they don't want him to lose. Uh, but then after watching it now, I was like, it's when I like see the way I'm like, Oh no, he's good at this. And now it feels like he's so good at this that like, that's why he's here because basically what I'm saying is, this man is so good that he definitely could have easily, I'm not going to even name names, but he definitely could have easily <laughs> replaced someone that's in the cast right now. Sure, oh. sure. The fact that he is in Last Chance Kitchen feels more intentional yeah. the more we see him cook. I believe it. I, I could believe it. I want to hear from a producer. Write in if you're yeah, a producer. Right you got, you, can, you, you got can send us take. an anonymous. <laughs> yeah, make a DM. burner account and then DM yeah. us. Yeah, or if you DM fine. us, we're not going to expose you. You yeah. can trust us. We're... Very good at keeping secrets. Uh, 
Kenny goes home. Sue wins. He needs three more wins to make it into the competition. This is this is heating up. This is getting exciting. All right, let's do our, our points breakdown. Remember, you can find our scoring rules on our Instagram at Top Chef Fantasy League. The quick fire favorite dishes. That's Savannah, Kevin, and Roscoe. That's 0.5 apiece. The quick fire winner is Roscoe. That's one whole point. Judges table is Kalina, Dan, and Michelle. They each get one point. The winner of the elimination challenge was Michelle. She gets two points and um, immunity next episode last chance kitchen with sue on that's 0.5 rosica said this usually takes two days to make that's 0.25 kalina used pre-made pasta that's negative 0.25 so all in all for this episode sierra you gain 3.25 wow. points the biggest gainage this episode how are you feeling Ugh, great about it yeah my team was really doing great things no one was in the bottom on the elimination challenge which mm -hmm. was cool really excited to see what happens really next. firing on all cylinders over there in in sierra Cato land if you gained a, a respectable three points right right yeah. behind sierra how are you feeling i needed this I needed <laughs> you really this. did the, you the really gap did. was getting larger and kind of getting not only uh, the, the three points, I mean, a quick fire finalist and win would have been nice, but three gives me a solid. And it and also got me excited because I do think Amanda has been, mm. been, been floating under the mm -hmm, radar, mm -hmm. but has not been like in danger in any real mm -hmm. way. So I think we're, we're going to get a standout episode. Well, from... okay, so not to jinx it, but last week I was saying that Kenny got the charm at it, and this week he's out. Um, Amanda, I think, got the charm at it this time. She's like, people say I sound like Daria, and then like did an extended giggle. Like the editors left, let her giggle for a long time. Yeah. I was like, that's adorable. But... She's had a few good personality. Oh, yeah. Like, she yeah. plays yeah. D&D. She smokes weed. She's a nerd. This right. is, I couldn't have picked... A perfect person for Team <laughs> Iffy. <laughs> uh, the perfect mascot. Per perfect Truly. mascot. Yeah. But yes, I was thinking that too. But I will say, in my defense, I do think that Kenny did have a standout moment in Last Chance Kitchen. That's true. Unfortunately, he's up against the Terminator over there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm, I am I'm a believer. Sue, I, look, you're not on my team, but if they're... I'm loving what I'm seeing. Do you Keep regret not taking the opportunity last week to draft Sue onto your team in exchange for one of your chefs? No, because I like who I have left. I mean, there's one person who I would probably trade, but I don't think y'all would take him. So, <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, enough said. Yeah. Understood. I, I, yeah, I realize I, it was revealed because there's only one man left on my team, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Hope, as, long, as long as that's not the next like. I feel confident. We'll find out Wednesday night. Uh, our leaderboard currently as it stands, if you're at 6.25 in last place, but not by much. I am in the middle with 8.75, which means leapfrogging into the lead with a grand total of 9.75 points. Sierra, you are at the top of the heap right now. Oh, man. it's It feels great, but it's scary. Mm -hmm. You know? There's only one way to go. Heavy weighs the crown. Yeah. We'll see what happens next week. Hey, if you have any thoughts or suggestions, you can drop us a line on Instagram at Top Chef Fantasy League. If you're doing your own Top Chef Fantasy League, please tag us. Here's something I found out this week. Jeopardy champion Amy Schneider does a Top Chef Fantasy League just Ooh, with her friends. Okay. I don't think she's ever heard of this podcast, but if you know Amy Schneider, get her to listen. Yeah. Yeah. Love to, the DMs. to talk to Amy Schneider. Yeah, yeah. Out. Huge Amy fan. Um, for full unedited episodes, you can check us out on YouTube. Thanks again to my co-host, Sierra Cato and Ify Wadiway. We'll be back on money next week thanks for listening bye 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 top chef fantasy league is hosted and produced by mike cabalon sierra Cato, and iffy wadiway our theme song is composed by dylan van auken special thanks to jarvis johnson follow us on instagram and youtube at top chef fantasy league